Hey, what's going on guys? It's Caleb, and today I have another After Effects tutorial for you guys, and this one's really cool. I had a client recently that wanted me to do a morphing type animation from one logo to another one. It turned out really cool and looked very interesting. So I did this in this little intro here. You can see we have a map marker icon go to a plane, and another plane, and another plane. I don't know, I just thought planes would fit nice with the marker. It's really cool, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. So, control N on the keyboard, let's make a new composition. Then we'll go here on the sidebar, and you don't have to use a plane specifically. I want to <laughs> just throw that out there, because in these tutorials sometimes, I use certain things and people get a little bit confused. This technique, you do not have to use a plane. Just keep that in mind, this is just an example. You can use whatever you want. In my case, I have a plane icon PNG, but if you had your own logo, then you could morph that as well with this technique. We have our plane icon, and it's a little bit too big, so we're going to scale that down. Grab the logo that you want to morph. So click on that, and then go up to Layer. And then from there, you go to Auto Trace. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a mask, a perfect mask around your icon or logo or whatever you're using and you're trying to trace. It's going to make a mask around it, and I'm going to show you why we need to do that. Uh, again, click on the thing that you want to trace out and get the mask from. So click on that, Plane Icon PNG, go to Layer, Auto Trace, and then press OK. And then we're going to have a new layer that shows up called Auto Traced Plane Icon PNG. And if you do not have a new layer that shows up, do it again, but go to Layer, uh, Auto Trace, and make sure Apply to New Layer is selected. If you don't have that selected, it's just going to put it on this one, which you can do, but if you want to follow along the way that I do, then uh, do it this way. Pull open the masks, and by doing that, you're going to press on your icon, or you're going to press on the auto-traced icon, and press M. It's going to pull up your masks, M for mask, and you're going to see the mask path. The next thing that we want to do is press layer, new, and shape layer. Then from there, go ahead and grab your pen tool and make a couple points on there just to create a path. Then on shape layer one, you want to press down on this arrow, go to contents, shape one, and then the path. So as you can see here, we have two different paths. We have our shape layer path and our mask path. So what we need to do is take the mask path, copy it by pressing control C. So on your auto trace, whatever it is, just press mask path and then control C to copy it. And then on your shape layer with the path one, you press on that and then control V to paste that in. And then if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be command, command C and command V. And as you can see, once we paste our mask path onto our shape path, we have the icon, but now the main thing about this and the reason why we had to do this is because now it's on a shape layer. So it's much easier to work with and we can actually morph it within just a couple steps now. So now we wanna do the same thing, but we just wanna find a different icon, something else to morph to. So why don't we grab another airplane? We'll grab this one over here and that one looks good. We'll scale that guy up just a little bit to match the proportions of this other plane. Then we're just gonna do the same thing. Grab our airplane, then go to layer, auto trace, put it on a new layer just to keep things organized, and there we go. Now we have our outlines, but we want to do the same thing. We want to press M on our keyboard on our auto trace to pull open our mask path, grab that, copy it, and now go back to your shape layer and pull that down and grab your path. But now what you want to do is keyframe your path, and what this is going to do is allow you to animate the path of the shape layer. So think of it this way. We have our first plane icon, so let's go ahead and rename this. We'll say plane one and the one we just did is going to be plane two so plane one we grabbed the mask path and put it onto the shape layer and that's the current one that's on there and now we have plane two and we're going to grab the path from this one keyframe the path on the current shape layer that has plane one and we're going to move forward a little bit again grab your second icon that you grabbed the path from copy it and then paste it onto the shape path so that we're animating we're keyframing the path on the shape layer so we're going from this one to this one. That might be a little bit confusing, but just think of it this way. You're just grabbing two different paths from two different icons and putting them onto one shape layer. All you're doing is animating the paths. Just in case that was a little bit confusing, I'm gonna go over it one more time, and I'm not gonna explain it too detailed, but you're just gonna get the steps one more time. So first thing we do is grab our plane icon. In this case, it could be anything you want. It could be your own logo. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna get a layer, auto trace, and what we're doing here is grabbing the path of this specific icon because it's a PNG. Then on this auto trace layer, press M to pull open the mask path, go to layer, new, and shape layer to create a new shape layer, 
make sure you have your pencil active and just make a couple marks so that we can have a path going. Now in your shape layer one, click down, go to contents, and you're gonna find your path in shape one. Then click down on that path one, and then from here, grab your mask path on your auto trace plane icon, or in this case, again, whatever it is that you're using, Control C or Command C on Mac to copy it, and then on your path on your shape layer, you're gonna do Control V or Command V to paste it on there, and then immediately you're gonna see it's filled up. And one thing I forgot to mention the first time around is if you want it to fill, make sure on your shape layer you have a fill, and you can change whatever color it is too. But just make sure you have a fill active, and you can also do this with a stroke too, which might give you some cool results. Now the next thing we wanna do is grab our next icon, and on my sidebar here, it's another airplane, but one more time, you can do whatever you want with this. It doesn't have to specifically be an airplane. Now on your next icon, go to layer, auto trace, put it on a new layer, and then grab that mask path. Press M on your auto trace to grab the mask path, copy it, then on the shape layer that you originally pasted your first icon to, keyframe your path, move forward a little bit, and then paste the new one. Now if you take a look, we're going to have two different keyframes with two different paths that we auto traced, and if you watch it, it goes from that to that. And it's a little bit big, and sometimes in order to fix that, you also need to animate your scale. So in order to animate your scale to change uh, how big this plane turns out to be, we're just going to press S on our keyboard to pull open scale, and then we're going to keyframe the first frame there, and we'll take a look and see when it ends on the path by pressing U to pull open all keyframes, go forward, and we'll see right there, that's when it needs to end, the transformation ends. So we're just gonna scale that down to match it. And then I will easy ease these keyframes by pressing F9 on the keyboard, and that'll easy ease it to make it just a little bit smoother. And as you can see there, it looks like it stays the same size the entire time, even though, you know, originally this next path was a little bit big, but if you do have, uh, whenever you paste your mask path onto your shape path, and it turns out to be a little bit bigger than what you want, then just do this little trick where you scale it down in coordination with the path transfer but that's pretty much it. That's how you morph icons inside of After Effects. I thought it was a really cool technique and you get some really cool results. I would really love to see you guys do something cool with this effect because I just think, you know, it's kind of random the effects you get with this uh, with this technique because I mean, you can't really control exactly how After Effects is going to use your paths. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next one.